Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. The world's biggest buyer of gold will stop purchases. Let's explore. This is pretty big news, but you know what? We've kind of gotten used to big news as of late. Russia, the world's largest buyer of gold, is going to stop making purchases. Let's see what this article here from Bloomberg says. Russia spent more than $40 billion building a war chest of bullion over the past five years. Now it's calling it quits. The central bank announced on Monday that it would stop buying gold starting April 1st but didn't explain the move. Analysts say Russia already has a lot of gold stash in reserves and likely doesn't need more. Plus, with gold prices near a seven-year high and international investors clamoring for a safe haven, Russian dealers are probably eager to sell. Bullion has become an extremely popular investment in recent weeks as the coronavirus uh, sells, sows fear through the financial markets, but some dealers are having a hard time sourcing gold bars. Um, and I will say this, that yes, Russia, uh, you know, they're stopping buying, but I don't think it's because they don't think they have enough. No, make no mistake. They won't think that until they have as much as the United States, or at least get up there in the, and higher up on the list. And for sure, uh, the central bank is now signaling to gold sellers that they should redirect their supplies externally, said Dmitry Dolgan, ING Bank's chief economist in Russia. Global demand seems to be high. So maybe it's the fact that they're having a hard time sourcing these bars, just like we're having a hard time sourcing coins. Uh, worldwide panic over the coronavirus outbreak and a flood of stimulus by central banks has ignited demand for the metal. But even though there's literally thousands of tons of gold bars sitting in vaults around the world, it's been hard to get metal when and where it's needed. Gold is usually shipped on ordinary, ordinarily uh, commercial flights, which are being canceled by the thousands. And uh, so here we see a gold strategy, the value of gold reserves and Russian gold holdings. Let's take a look at this chart here uh, through in recent years. I think it's quite fascinating indeed to see this. And uh, we can see that it is a uh, made a move upwards, and it's a uh, Russian gold holdings, and it's kind of coming to tapering off here at the top. But boy, they've been increasing their holdings like crazy. The gold market really is being tested like never before. Gold prices were steady on Monday at one thousand six hundred twenty-two dollars an ounce uh, as of five thirty-four p.m. in London. But as of right now, actually, we'll take a look at the prices right now, and they are actually, well, it's about the same, 1622.30 for gold. But more gold coming from Russia could ease tightness in the market. Suppliers may turn to chartered flights as a way to reach key buyers, said Edward uh, Ripkin, deputy head of the Precious Metals Division at Lanta Bank in Moscow. He said, there's demand from traditional buyers like London, but also places such as India, Turkey, and Singapore. Russia's relentless gold buying in recent years has been a key pillar of support for the market, putting a floor on their prices as investors ditched safe havens and bought riskier, higher yielding assets. The bullion stockpile held by Russia's central bank is valued at about $120 billion dollars, which is a mere pittance of the new $2.2 trillion uh, package, relief package released by the United States government. And gold accounts for about 20% of Russian international reserves, which is a high level historically and compared with other central banks. The central bank probably doesn't want to increase gold shares and reserves while the size of reserves is falling, said Tatina um, Evdokinova an analyst at the Nordia Bank in Moscow. The central bank uh, said future decisions about gold purchases will depend on the state of financial markets, according to his statement. So it's very interesting to see this activity. And is it a, uh, 
a message maybe to be sent to us who are buying gold right now. Maybe should we call it quits for a, for a while until the price uh, stabilizes, until these markets do? Uh, there may be a lesson here. You know, most of us in this community, we say if the central banks are doing it, accumulating gold, then we should too. But maybe in times like this, when the uh, Russia, the world's biggest buyer of gold, is stopping buying, maybe that's a message to us too, that we should do what the central banks are, do are starting to do and stop buying it. In reality, I think that in a sense, buying gold uh, in these crazy times is something that's up to the individual. You know, understanding the premiums tied to gold, understanding the availability, uh, the tightness of the market right now, and, uh, you know, how will we fare once this is done? You know, is, is gold going to go back down to $1,200 an ounce after this? It very well could. But what does after this mean? Where will the economy be after we uh, recover from this coronavirus? You know, President Trump said by June, by the beginning of June, we should be at a point of recovery. Uh, what does recovery look like? Um, you know, he likes to think that it will be this V curve that will just kind of pick up where we left off. But I think the longer that we we go, and in fact, we've already passed the point of no return, in my opinion, to where recovery is not going to just be instant. It's going to be staggered. And I think there's going to be a lot of concern about what the moves we make. Because make no mistake, whether you are for or against the relief package that was released by Congress um, and signed by the president, you know, $2.2 trillion is a lot of money by any measure. But what the Federal Reserve has been doing even since before this crisis and what they're doing in response to the crisis more than doubles that. And in fact, what some say between 6 to $8 trillion is being thrown at this problem right now. So no matter where you lie on it, Make no mistake, the dollar is in trouble, uh, at least in debt, is, is, is going to be an even bigger issue. You know, you measure for the debt to GDP ratio. When the dust settles, it'll be very interesting to see what those numbers are after all of this. Uh, but what doesn't change is the amount of gold that can be mined or will be mined uh, now and in the future. There's only so much of it that you can pull out of the ground. And really, in a sense, that goes for silver, too. There's only so much that can be pulled out of the ground. You know, and with regards to silver, uh, you've, there's a big video that, I, a video that I posted a while called The Big Lie About Supply. And, uh, and the thing is, is there is a lot of silver. There's enough silver to meet the needs for industrial applications. But right now, there's not enough silver uh, product out there to meet uh, the demand on the physical side in the form of coins, rounds, and bars, investment-grade silver, is starting to pick up big time. It'll be very interesting to see what the Silver Institute comes out with with those numbers when they release their report. Gold, same thing. There's been a bigger demand for gold. Premiums are continuing to increase. There is a supply crunch, and uh, I think it's going to be uh, quite some time before we see that settle down, especially when you're having governors of a few states today make mention of stay-at-home orders. More and more of these governors are doing it and prohibiting travel between states here in the United States uh, because we're starting to see the United States now become uh, ground zero now, and especially in New York, California, and Michigan uh, are ground zero for this, for this virus. Um, pray for our nation. Pray for the world. You know, this is a this is a worldwide pandemic. It's obvious it's, it's affecting a lot of people uh, economically as well as for the virus itself, for health. There's things we're still learning about the virus. We know that it can, it be, you can be asymptomatic for uh, quite a number of days, up to two weeks before you show symptoms. So be safe out there. Shelter in place as much as you can. Wash your hands. Um, take all the precautions that the Centers for Disease Control give you and your national institutes and your national health uh, services for your nations. Uh, heed all the warnings um, because it'd be better if we don't have it, if we don't spread it and we don't have it. And uh, But there you have it. Fascinating indeed. Big news that Russia is going to stop buying gold for now. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching. 
and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.